I'm Laura Engel, and you are in the strategy room. All right, throughout the campaign trail, Donald Trump bashed our trade deals and vowed to make them better. Now, as president, he is starting to take some action. He is expected to sign a pair of executive orders aimed at cracking down on trading abuses that lead to trade deficits. Now, all of this is being done a week before the president is scheduled to meet with the president of China, one of the major sources of this deficit. So let's talk about it. Here to discuss are Professor of Political Science Jeannie Zeno and Vice President of the Manhattan Republican Party, Brian Morgenstern, Thank you both for joining me. All right, a lot to kind of get our brains around with this one. So, Brian, first to you, can you explain these two orders? You know, what are we hoping to accomplish with this? Well, this is uh, the president putting the rubber to the road. I mean, one of his favorite words on the campaign trail, other than believe me or let me tell you, was China. <laughs> and about right. closing these trade deficits and renegotiating these agreements. And so there are a number. It, he wants to find the pressure points. He wants to find the abuses so that they can fix them. Probably something like an intellectual property. Probably, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the tax structure that can incentivize moving labor overseas. So some of these things, uh, currency manipulation. He always talks about. So he, he wants his Department of Commerce and his Trade Council to find the pressure points so that he can get uh, some more leverage on some of our trading partners like China, Japan, Mexico, Germany, and others. And Jeannie, obviously this is going to play a part in their meeting, right, coming up. But how much of a part and, and what does it do to the meeting? between the two presidents. It's going to be a keeper, and I think this is one of, going to be one of the most fascinating meetings the president is going to have thus far in his new term, because this is, as Brian mentioned, been a key component of his campaign, has been talking about China. He is the first president in a long time to say he is going to take China on in this regard, and this is a long time coming. You know, even people on the Democratic side will admit that China has long been a real juggernaut in this area, and few presidents have been willing or able to take them on. But that said, I think the president is going to confront some real challenges because this is not something that is going to go well down well with many people in the business community and even people in his own party. So from that extent, he is going to have to really be very clear as to what he's doing, why, and the economic impact on the United States. Because the way he laid it out on the campaign trail, it was very surface. But when we, we see the details on this, he's going to face some real challenges. But he's a business guy, right, Brian? I mean, many on the right are taking issue with the president's approach to trade, saying that he is looking to impose tariffs, which can be harmful to consumers. And some may even argue you know, that trade deficit may not even be a bad thing. So what do you make on that point? Yeah, the, the trade deficits, I, I, I think, is a talking point that maybe gets people's attention. But when you actually talk about a trade deficit, selling more things to another country in itself is not bad. However, uh, there, there are some things in this sphere that lead to an uneven playing field, among them the fact that China often steals American intellectual property and inventions and then creates them cheaper and then sells them back to us so that American companies actually end up suffering and American workers who would otherwise be making those products and end up suffering. So there are some abuses here that should be uh, attacked. And I think just talking about a trade deficit steers attention to the issue but isn't necessarily the problem that they're actually addressing. And Jeannie, another reason the president has pushed for better trade deals is to create jobs. We've heard that so much on the trail and, and now as well. Will it? Well, I think that's the big question. How do you use this to create American jobs? You know, simply returning factories to the U.S. does not in and of itself create jobs, unfortunately, because so much of the work is now automated. So there are, there are right. promises that he has made that it's going to be difficult for him to deliver on. And this is where he has to deliver because everything for him comes down to jobs and the economy. He's got to deliver on that promise, I think, even more so than immigration, health care, or anything else he's talked about. If he can't do that, given, as you mentioned, his business, prowess, he's going to have a really tough time. It's definitely going to be an interesting one to watch, as always. <laughs> Thank you both for being here, Brian and Jeannie. All right, we want to invite you to join us for complete political coverage. you got to keep it right here, foxnews.com. I'm Laura Engel. Thanks for watching.